And with that, welcome back to Skip Turn YGO. I'm your host, Marvin. And today we're going to discuss one of my favorite decks of all time, Goldie Runic. If I would have to summarize this deck for you, it's basically the reincarnation of Naturia Runic, where the Runic cards help the engine cards get into synchro plays. But let me present some of the deck and then we'll talk more about it. I'm playing a 16 cards Runic engine, not including the field spell. So I'm playing three of all the good Runic spells and two dispelling. And I don't think anyone else really needs to play more than this. This deck is 43, but uh, the reason for that is just weird side patterns. Sometimes you need to adapt a bit more. So yeah, this is usually just completely fine. We'll put this up here and then let's talk about the Godi cards. We're playing five tuners, three shift. It's the best tuner of the Godis. And then one paces, one sep. For anyone unfamiliar with how the Godis work, you want to banish these four in your turn and then get them back during the standby phase and make it quick synchro doing the main phase of your opponent. Allows you to be very explosive make some very good plays be very surprising because nobody really knows these cards and they only get better in the coming months this one only comes back when you banish it in the enemy turn and you immediately have to synchro it's the worst one by far but you have to play one more just one more name and sometimes it does come up we play five tuners and only one non-tuner of the goatees which is snopios and it's the only good non-tuner card that they have the reason these two engines harmonize with each other so well is because the goatees in the pure version they don't really have good non-tuners the good non-tuners come from the runics we're almost always having access to level twos and fours which are the most important ones to get into combo for this and to support everything i'm playing three squadron this one allows you to synchro in the enemy turn as well then i'm playing one lifeless leaf fish it's one of the good fish non-tuners that there is in the game and it just allows you to get into combo hold up um, let me clean this up one cornerstone of this tactic can also be the bestials i'm playing three and one it gives you level six access which means this and every goatee tuner means that you're well in your combo as well and i really like them even in matchups where they're not really banging you can side them out and i think they're always good then i'm playing one mudora and one keldo this is because of the matchup against tier still having nightmares because the first time this deck eventually came up was during the tier meta and since tier has risen in popularity a bit these two do come up also they're level fours sometimes you discard them off of hugin and then you just have something in your graveyard to protect yourself from anything i like them in this deck. Then I'm playing three Ash as the only hand trap I have, given I have a lot of rogue matchups still, and I still meet like Despia, Labyrinth, every other match. I feel like not having this is kind of troll. I'm playing one Called by the Grave and one Reasoning. This could be like Runic Reasoning, because it's pretty much the only deck that can play this. And Called by is just Ash or Droll Protection. Sometimes you get Ash on the Hugin, you lose a lot of card economy, so I'd much rather prefer having the Called by the Grave there. And then I'm playing three Droplet in the main. The main reason for that is sometimes you get into situations where you have the opportunity to get the tuners back from the banished pile and you don't really have any targets to synchro them with so why not use them for droplet for example i think this card is phenomenal at the moment with pretty much no shifter running around except for flu and like the three and a half Kashira players that are left. Let's get to the extra deck. We have two level fours. Uh, Cupid Pitch is usually the way to go for the normal combo. And then you have Herald of Arclight uh, if you have a bad hand. Then I'm playing three Arion Pos, two Ascan. You absolutely need two of each. You cycle through your extra deck a lot. Usually you have one push during a game, like one major push. And if you have to claw your way back, it's very hard, but you're better off just having two and two. The options are thin as well. I play one white aura whale. This comes up by far the least, but if you want a quick synchro with the goatee cards, you can only use it to make fish synchro monsters, which fittingly enough, the white aura whale is. And just reading the card makes it seem very OP. It's basically like four effects. It has a mass pop on summon. It can also revive itself from the graveyard when destroyed by banishing a card which is superb for the deck and it can also do piercing damage but since we almost never have the battle phase that doesn't really matter but similar to the ratios of the former you're better off having it than just not having it i'm playing one chenging as the level 10 usually make that when you have squadron and you target a level 8 on your field if the deck is really bad against non-target banishing which nearly every deck is you can just summon this and be fine and then you have the big boy, Godi from the deep. It blows up the whole field and then it gains 500 attack for every monster that is banished and itself comes back in the standby phase. If you do that near the end of a combo and you maybe you have skipped your battle phase previously, this is pretty much the OTK line. So this is the win con. For the runic fusions, I'm playing three Gary. 
and two Hugin. The reason I'm not playing three Hugin is because you don't really need it. You need it for fountain access, obviously, sometimes because they want to pop something, but Gary you want because you want to get into the synchros. And I needed space for one extra card, which is SP. Usually you want your EMZ free, but uh, thanks to SP's effect, you do get to have your zone free more often than not. So you can just go into SP. For this side deck, I'm playing three Dark Ruler no more. I'm only playing two hand traps, which is uh, the one Ash you saw. And then I'm playing the three Droll in, in the side. And yeah, sometimes you just cannot break boards. I think these cover the matchups that the other one doesn't cover. But of course, there are other applications for it as well. Then I'm playing three Deck Lockdown. It's Droll for going first. And since you should have Fountain set up, you're also pretty safe just going Deck Lockdown and then waiting out. It's a big old middle finger for a lot of decks. Then I play two Lightning Storm and just imagine one Harpy's Feather Duster here for the back row heavy decks. And since you're almost always playing without any Heart Negate, three Judgment, because evenly really sucks against you. Like it doesn't suck, but it sucks for you. And that's it for the deck, but I know a lot of you have a few questions about all the connections and how this works together. And to answer those, I'll show you a little replay now. All right, guys, let's quickly look at a combo and what is possible with a deck any sort of random hand. In this situation, I start with runic tip, search for fountain, go for dispelling to summon. Then we have chain link one, fountain chain link two, Hugin. That is important because we want to protect the fountain from getting ashed. Uh, we discard Keldo and I actually get impermed on the Hugin here. Not that great of an imperm, but it keeps me from drawing it yet again, but I do draw two. Uh, we have a shift in our hands or tuner. We normal summon that and then either go into Cupid Pitch or Herald of the Arc Light. Uh, we choose Cupid Pitch and that is only possible because we have another runic spell in our hand, which is Freezing Curses. And we go for Gary. We can do that because Cupid Pitch's level is reduced thanks to her effect. Uh, she's actually a level two now, so we can go into a level six synchro of our own for Arion Pass. Chain link one Cupid Pitch, chain link two Arion Pass. Cupid Pitch goes for Squadron into our hand and Arion Pass banishes Shift. That gives us the opportunity to bring her back in the standby phase and have the opportunity to quick synchro in the enemy's main phase, which we can do into a nice little monster that is called Askan. Askan's effect is banish itself and another card from the field. Uh, second effect from Arion Pass if it's used for a Synchro Summon. You can banish a fish from the graveyard, take another fish from your deck with the same level. Uh, Askan has the great effect. If it's banished, it can banish a fish and bring itself back. So we have another level 8 body on field. And then we use Squadron. Uh, Squadron target the Askan to make a Cheng Ying. And if we then have anything in hand like a Druus Worm, we can trigger the Cheng Ying. So it doesn't have a lot to do with runic cards or goatee cards anymore. But uh, yeah, that's a usual combo with the deck. It really shows you how dynamic the deck is. And uh, well, usually at this point, it's curtains for everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this small combo guide. Of course, there are a thousand ways you can play this deck and a thousand situations which may come up. And if you want to know more about it, write a comment down below. Let me know. I really love this deck. I really love playing this deck in any sort of situation. And while I at it, leave a like, a sub and all the good stuff so you can help me grow this channel into something truly special. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, cheerio.